In this video, we're going to take a look at using conjugates to rationalize denominators. Now, we know that it's not okay to leave a radical in the denominator of a fraction. Can't do it. So, we have to figure out a way to get rid of it. And if we have an expression like this, a binomial in the denominator, in order to get rid of that square root, we're going to use what's called the conjugate to rationalize that denominator so that our um, expression will be in simplest form. So, first of all, what are conjugates? Well, conjugates are just having these two things with the opposite signs right here in between them. So in this case, they're both plus. So our conjugate is going to be 5 minus the square root of 2. If this was 5 minus the square root of 2, the conjugate would be 5 plus the square root of 2. So the conjugates. Now, when we multiply, we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom of our fraction by the conjugate. So it's going to be 5 minus the square root of 2. Okay, Notice those are opposite signs. We want to put this in parentheses because notice what we're going to have to do to simplify this. We're going to have to FOIL to do that simplification. Also, if we do it on the bottom, we have to do it on the top because really what we're doing is we're just creatively writing 1. This is just 1. We're not changing the value of the fraction. We're just writing it in a different way and getting rid of those square roots on the bottom. So on the top, we're going to distribute that 2 through. And so that's going to give us 2 times 5, which is 10, and then 2 times negative square root of 2, so that'll be minus 2 square root of 2. Then on the bottom, and this is where conjugates are really cool, watch what happens here. We have 5 times 5, we're going to FOIL, so 5 times 5 is 25, and then we have 5 times negative square root of 2, which would be negative 5 square root of 2. Then we have the square root of 2 times 5, so that's plus 5 square root of 2. Hey, look at that. Those are opposites of each other, so those are going to cancel out. Awesome. Oh, but wait, we have the square root of 2 times negative square root of 2. That'll be negative square root of 4, which, ooh, that's a nice one. That's just going to be 2. So that's not so bad. We get rid of all the um, square root stuff that's in the denominator. So let's keep working on this, and we have... 10 minus 2 square root of 2 on the top. We're not going to be able to do anything with that. That just is what it is. And then on the bottom, our simplification, well, this is gone, this is gone, because those are opposites of each other. And we get 25 minus 2. So we have 25 minus 2. And finally, we can do that to get 23 on the bottom there. So we have that whole thing over 23. Now, I don't know if you try to do this but without writing the stuff down, but holy smokes, my head hurts just thinking about trying to do all this in my head. So one tip that I can give you, and this is true I think for almost all math, is write stuff down. Do yourself a favor and, and write the stuff down. That'll make it the problem a lot easier, I promise. So let's take a look at this second one. Now for this one, Again, we have those square roots in the denominator, so we want to get rid of them. And we're going to do it by multiplying by the conjugate. Again, the conjugate is just has the opposite sign of whatever's in the middle there. So this is going to be the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5, like so. And then we're going to do the same thing on the top. We're just creatively multiplying by 1. So we have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 5, like so. Okay, and then in this one, look at this. We're going to have to FOIL on the top and on the bottom of our fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so on the top, we have 2 times the square root of 2. So this equals 2 square root of 2. Then we have 2 times negative square root of 5. So minus 2 square root of 5. Then we're going to have the square root of 10 times the square root of 2. Remember, we can multiply those numbers inside and then just put it all under the square root. 
So we have plus the square root of 20, and then we have the square root of 10 times negative square root of 5, which will give us negative square root of 50. Okay, so that's what we've got on the top. We'll simplify that in a bit. Then here on the bottom, we have the square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is going to be the square root of 4. We saw that before. Then square root of 2 times negative square root of 5 is going to be minus the square root of 10. Then we have the square root of 5 times square root of 2. It's going to be plus the square root of 10, like so. And then finally, square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 is going to be minus square root of 25, which we know is going to be a nice number. Okay, then let's take this down over here and see what happens. We have this 2 square root of 2 minus 2 square root of 5. Can't do anything with that. But this we can simplify. And hey, wait, we could simplify this one too. So this right here is going to break up into, let's start with the square root of 20. And I'm just going to have to rewrite some stuff here. And just to kind of keep things neat, be very careful as you're writing this, making sure you don't mix up any of the numbers. Now, the square root of 20, we can break that up using perfect square factors. So f square root of 4 times the square root of 5. That helps us because this will just be 2. Then we have that minus square root of 50. Well, 50 could be written as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Okay, so then on the bottom, what do we have going down there? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and minus the square root of 10 plus square root of 10, that stuff's gone, minus 5 right there, holy cow, and then that's just going to be minus 3, and let's see what happens on the top. Hmm, I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'm going to just write above here what's going on. So this is 2, and this is 5, Hey, look at this. We've got 2 square root of 5 and minus 2 square root of 5, so those are gone. And then we have 2 square root of 2 minus 5 square root of 2. We can combine those, so that would be minus 3 square root of 2, okay, over negative 3. And then, hey, wait, we could simplify these. And we're left with just the square root of 2. How about that? Holy cow. That's way nicer than that crazy thing. And again, making sure, remember, we can, if we have like radicals, we can combine those things. So these were opposites of each other. And then right here, we had the 2 square roots of 2. And then this was 5 square roots of 2. So we combine those, just like 2x and minus 5x. It would be minus 3x, except that we have a square root of 2. So we have that. So conjugates, using those to rationalize denominators, remembering again, we can't leave a square root in the denominator. So we got to get rid of it. And if it's an expression like this, where we have a binomial, and we want to get rid of it out of that denominator, we just multiply by the conjugate. And the conjugates just have opposite signs. So if this was a minus down here, it would be plus. We multiply creatively by 1, top and bottom. It's either going to end up where we FOIL to clean the stuff up, or we're going to distribute, and then look for things that we can simplify. On the bottom, those middle two terms are always going to be opposites of each other and cancel out, and we're going to be left with just a number, which was our goal. Then on the top, we might have a situation like we saw here where, hey, we could do some simplification and all of a sudden we had some like radicals. I hope this video was helpful. I know that you can do this stuff too. Just keep working hard. You can do it. Rock on.